106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. You are listening to Undercountry Music with Neil Smith. Digging under the surface, finding the underground country music, news, and interviews, and bringing them to you. Ah! 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 I'm on fire! I'm on fire! <coughs> Actually, I'm not on fire. <coughs> uh, hi there. It's uh, episode 106, Undercountry Music. Here I am. I'm Neil Smith. I'm coming to you from high atop my wind- windy-ass tower. Overlooking beautiful and seductive Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Actually, I overlook a corner of a room on the second floor of a neighborhood in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. But, you know, that, you know, that's, um, yeah, I don't want to destroy the fantasy, so forget I said that. Anyway, dang it, what's going on here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got an awesome co-host today to bring you the best in underground country music, the kind you won't hear on mainstream country. I have a guy here who's originally from Chicago. I think he's still from Chicago. He played in a British tribute band in the 80s. Uh, He was instrumental in the Paisley Underground movement. And now he's making country music, and I'm really freaking confused. So I'm going to let him explain all this. Ladies and gentlemen, with the last American Songbook, uh, here is Eric McMahon. Howdy. Howdy, Neil. Thanks for having me on. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, well, you, you know, you know I, I, well, couldn't do, I couldn't do this show without great co-hosts. Actually, I could, but the show would suck worse than if I had co-hosts. Well, uh, it's my pleasure to be on. But, you know, you know, back in the day when I was just growing up, you know, I, I got into doing a little Beatle thing for a while there. And uh, it was a good job. It was better than working at McDonald's. Got the chicken shows, you know, all that stuff. So I, I did that for a bit, you know, but then I, I got tired of wearing wigs and stuff like that. I'd rather wear a cowboy hat. So I, I quit that and, then, uh, you know, got into something else. So that's... Uh, yeah, but, but you did some really freedom. cool stuff when you did that. Like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you played the cave in Liverpool. Yeah, you know, so, you know, that was the cool part of it where... Went all around the world, you know, England and Tokyo, and even went to Nashville, played on top of the Hard Rock Cafe, you know, to recreate the Let It Be concert. But, you know, really my heart was more into, you know, like roots, folk, country music. And basically, here's how the whole thing happened. My mom said, hey, you look a little bit like George Harrison. You know, maybe you can get into one of those bands, you know, that imitate the Beatles. And, and I, it was mainly just based on that I looked a little bit like George with the wig on. So, well, I'll tell you what. You know what? Yeah. A lot of people tell me I do an amazing George Harrison imitation. Would you like to hear it? Go for it. Okay, here it goes. He's dead, dude. Yeah. He, he doesn't make exactly. any sounds. There, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Ah, my George Harrison impression, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, but, yeah, so, you know, I, I did it, and then after a while, you know, I was like, nah, this isn't for me. You know, I wanted to get back into the, uh, you know, more of the roots, you know, country thing where my heart really was. So it was just like a, it was just a good gig for a while. Well, nice. Now, um, I was reading your bio on Bandcamp, and I got to tell you, I was blown away by by the stuff I was reading. And part of it, part of it was your background here, but uh, apparently, you wrote this entire new album that you have out now, uh, the Last American Songbook. And apparently, you, according to this, what I read, you wrote this in a week in a muggy hotel room in Branson, Missouri. And uh, tell me about that experience. Yeah, well, it's really true. Uh, so here's the Beatle connection. Some of those guys that I used to be in a Beatle tribute with, you know, band, now they're out in Branson. So I went out and visited them because they were starting a big show and stuff like that. But as soon as I got there, they had to leave town to do some special engagement. So basically I found myself in Branson, Missouri, you know, all alone, stranded with just like my Telecaster, brand new Telecaster that I bought. 
So I could have just turned right back and went back to Chicago. I figured, oh, you know, the Ozark Mountains, there's good music out here, you know. And so I just hung out for the week there. But they had booked, you know, the hotel. And then after the, f- the first day, I just started writing these songs. And then uh, just through a series of events and being inspired by, you know, watching a Hee Haw Marathon and the Farm Report, you know, from the RDF TV and stuff, I just wrote this whole album in a, in a week's time and then went back to Chicago and just sort of recorded it then, you know, like almost in a day. And there was, was something really about, there was something about Buck Owens and a shower. Yeah, that, so that, what one it sounded, that, that one sounded a little freaky to me there, okay? <laughs> okay, well, I'll explain. So, here's, so um, one of the, the guys in the band, his father was there. And I had known him, you know, since we were kids. So even though his son was out of town, I said, well, I'll go have dinner with, you know, with my friend's dad. So all day long, I was watching this, uh, you know, Key Hall Marathon. I was watching Buck and the Buck Cruise, you know, sing all their great hits and stuff like that. And then I was, I was like, I want to write a song like that, you know, because I was in the, I was writing, you know, I was, the flow was going. And so I was running a little bit late and I had to take a shower because I had been, you know, just traveling on the road and stuff like that for days. So while I was in the shower getting ready to go out for dinner, I just got inspired to write like this one, you know, like swing, Western swing song. And so after watching the, uh, the, the Buck Owens on Hee Haw. And so I was writing it, I was taking the soap and sort of writing the words on the wall. And, so, and as soon as I was done, you know, I just jumped out of the shower soaking wet because he didn't want to forget the song, you know. And so... Uh, so, I, so you were channeling kind of, Buck Owens when you were buck naked. There you go. Perfectly. And so I was late for the dinner and stuff like that, but... You know, I the inspiration came in the shower. You know, so you have to go with it. Now, now when you when okay. you start writing song lyrics on the wall with a bar of soap, you know that that's when you know you are dedicated. Yeah, well, the you know when I was writing all these songs out there, here's a funny thing, Neil. And this is just sort of like the nuts and bolts of like songwriting 101. I was having all these ideas and stuff like that, and I didn't have a computer or anything, so I was writing them all down, and I, I ran out of paper. You know, so, like, it, it, in the morning, I had to go down to the front desk, and, you know, you know, usually ask for, you know, uh, you know, condoms or toothpaste or whatever. I'm like, you got any paper? And the guy's like, what? I go, I'm writing all these songs. I'm running out of paper. You know, so that was, so whether it was the, the shower wall or know, backs of, uh, you know, cereal boxes or whatever. That's what he's going to write. He, he probably thought you were asking for papers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, <laughs> but any, so, yeah, so I was, yeah, I mean, I was, it was flowing, and I wish I would have had, like, a little recorder or something, you know. I even called my home and sang a song on my message machine so I wouldn't forget it at one time, like, it's or in the morning, you know. Oh, now that that's funny. Now it says that you wrote it in a week, but you recorded it in a day. But we'll get into more of that later because right now I'd like to play one of those songs that you wrote while you were buck naked channeling Buck Owens. Would that be all right? <laughs> Sounds like a party. All right, it's not just a party. It's a redneck party here on Under Country Music, episode 106, because this song's called Redneck Hippie from Eric McMahon, right here on Under Country Music, episode 106, with your show host, Neil Smith and Eric McMahon. Well, I'm trucking down the highway just looking for fun An open bottle whiskey never hurt no one I feel on at last that my time has finally come You know I want to get married to a southern gal Was looking kind of pretty in my best pal Well, sharing the good times, laughing the bad when they come I see the sun before me Feel the wind in my back A simple old story 
From Eric McMahon hanging out here on Under Country Music 106. Dang, Eric, you there? Yes, howdy, I'm here. Hey, so, all right, well, I love that tune. That sounded awesome. So, I mean, it sounds great. So, I mean, normally people agonize over their recordings to get them to sound so good, but um, you state that you wrote everything in a week and you just recorded it in one day. And this is like a full album of stuff. So, you know, how, how did you do such a great job in just one day of recording? I mean, I, I mean, why did you guys just snort rails of meth and just, just go for it? Well, o- almost, you know, I, t- I knew when I was driving back from Branson, Chicago, I was thinking about, uh, I knew some good friends, some good pickers up here in Chicago so, oh, I thought you meant the rails I, of meth. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I uh, had a friend who had a little like studio in his like living room. And uh, so we got everybody together. I had gotten together with the bass player and the drummer one time earlier just to, you know, to give them a little heads up on it, you know, to, and to make sure that they'd be okay. So... And what, what it was was that it was like the hottest day of the year in Chicago, like 110 degrees, like crazy on Memorial Day. And so we just got in the room. So I wrote the songs pretty simple because I wanted to go back to the old time country, you know, three chords and the truth type of a deal thing. And I picked all the good players. We had to do one overdub session with the fiddle player because... Uh, the band was bleeding into like his microphone, you know, it was, was 